sanan ääreen. Luen tähän alkuun psalmin 96. Laulakaa Herralle uusi laulu. Laula Herralle maa. Laulakaa Herralle maan asukkaat. Laulakaa Herralle, ylistäkää hänen nimeään. Kertokaa päivästä päivään ilosanomaa hänen avustaan. Julistakaa hänen kunniaansa. Ilmoittakaa hänen ihmettekojaan kaikille kansoille. Suuri on Herra, ylistäkää häntä. Pelätkää häntä, hän on jumalista korkein. Eivät ole jumalia toisten kansojen jumalat, mutta Herra on taivaitten luoja. Hänen on loisto ja hänen on kunnia. Hänen pyhäkössään on voima ja kirkkaus. Maan kaikki kansat. Tunnustakaa Herra, tunnustakaa Herran kunnia ja voima. Tunnustakaa hänen nimensä kunnia. Tuokaa hänelle uhrilahjat, astukaa hänen pyhäkkönsä pihaan. Kumartukaa hänen pyhän kirkkautensa eteen. Vaviskoon koko maa ja pelätköön häntä. Julistakaa kaikkien kansojen kuulla, Herra on kuningas. Hän loi maan, joka pysyy, eikä horju. Oikeutensa mukaan hän tuomitsee kansoja. Iloitkoon taivas, riemuitkoon maa, pauhatkoon meri kaikkineen. Juhlikoot maa ja sen luodut, humiskoot ilosta metsien puut Herran edessä, sillä hän tulee. Hän tulee tuomaan oikeutta, hallitsemaan vanhurskaasti maata. Uskollisesti sen kansoja. Rukoillaan. Kiitos taivaallinen Isä valtavasta hyvyydestäsi ja rakkaudestasi meitä ihmisiä ja kaikkia luotujasi kohtaan. Kiitos keväästä ja alkavasta kesästä. Kiitos linnun laulusta, tuulen huminasta, vehreästä luonnosta. Auta meitä iloitsemaan tästä kaikesta hyvästä ja kauniista, mitä olet meille antanut. Kiitos siitä, että sinun sanasi on luotettava ja varma. 
ja saamme aina luottaa huolenpitoosi ja lupauksiisi. Avaa meidän mielemme ja sydämemme ottamaan vastaan se, mitä haluat meille tänään puhua. Amen. What a joy it is to share Jesus with you this day. Many of you students are on holiday now, and you're probably wondering what you can do with yourselves. Maybe you're bored. I have good news for you this day. When you have Jesus, you're never bored. His caring hands can look after you and be with you, and he can be your constant companion and friend. Nothing is boring when he's around, and he's watching over you, which is our theme for today's message. Many of our greatest fears in life do not come from what we can see or do know, but from what we cannot see and don't know. Every year, the Israelites traveled from their homes to far away Jerusalem for one of their three main feasts, which they celebrated. Jesus himself traveled this journey from his hometown, and it was 145 kilometers one way. So the road was unsafe, uncertain, and it was really a difficult, hot road. The people were exposed on the road. There was burning heat, unstable weather, and often there were robbers and criminals lying in wait, knowing exactly how they could attack their victims. The people knew they had to travel, but they did not know if they would make it to the end of their journey. They felt weak. They felt exposed. They felt unsafe. Our journey to our new Jerusalem is much longer than the journey the Israelites took. We are also living in a dangerous, difficult time right now. God's promises are always with us, but we need constant encouragement. We need courage and we need strength. When God's people, the Israelites, traveled difficult roads, they used to sing the Psalms to us. They didn't cover their mouths in fear. No, they would pray the Psalms. And they would cry out with hope and faith, raising their voices against danger. One psalm that's a great blessing that they also used, it's called the Psalm of Ascents because the Jews used it much, tells a very different, special um, comfort to all of us. In there are eight verses, and it repeatedly states that the Lord keeps us, that the Lord watches over us. So let's look at Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who keeps you, who watches over you, will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel, now put your name where it says Israel, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord keeps you. He watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, now and forevermore. Notice that the word keep in some Bibles also uses watches over you. If something is very valuable to you, and it's given to you for safekeeping, where will you put it? What will you do with it? You'll probably hide it away or lock it some away somewhere where it's very safe, where it's secure, where it cannot be harmed or taken. Just so our precious Jesus looks after you and looks after me. He's watching over us, keeping his eyes upon us, helping us, encouraging us on our journey. A tired, hurting, very pregnant runaway slave was walking along a desert road. 
very desperate when she stopped next to a well. She was hungry, she was thirsty, and she was frightened. This woman's name was Hagar. Her master and mistress, Abram and Sarah, had given her no choice but to come a surrogate mother to their child. But once she conceived, great conflict arose between Sarah and Hagar. So much so that Sarah mistreated Hagar. And Hagar, being frightened and unhappy and scared, fled into the desert, a hot desert. She was very very alone. She was miserable. She was unsure and she felt unsafe, like some of you are probably feeling right now about the future. But an angel of the Lord came to Hagar and said to her, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from? Where are you going? Genesis 16:8. Notice the Lord knew Hagar and he called her by her name. Hagar, where are you going? He says to you too, where are you going? What are you doing? The desert was spread out before Hagar and she said, I'm running from my mistress Sarah. All Hagar could see was misery, difficulties, barren land. But the angel saw another way. In the middle of this crisis pregnancy, God saw Hagar and her unborn baby and offered hope. Hagar entered into a relationship with God that changed her identity. There, beside the well, she said, You are the God who sees me, Elroy. I have now seen the God who sees me. She had hope. We see that in Genesis 16, 13. Her experience at the well became so widely known that in time the well was called Beer Lahai Roy, which means spring of the living one who sees me. Oh, friends, God is your living spring. God is your hope. He watches over you. He knows your name and he loves you. God saw the Israelites when they were slaves in Egypt, and he rescued them. He saw Joshua when Joshua took over from Moses. Joshua had great fear, but four times in Joshua 1, God said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. Verses 6, 7, 9, and 18, he said that. And he told Joshua that he would never leave him and never forsake him. God will never leave you, friend. He'll never forsake you. God saw and watched over Ruth when she left all that was familiar to her in her homeland to accompany her mother-in-law, Naomi, to a foreign land. God brought about one of the most beautiful love stories in the Bible when Boaz married Ruth. And Boaz and Ruth had little Obed. And Obed was a forefather of David, of the tribe of Jesus, our Messiah. God watched over Rahab when she hid the spies. And God made sure she was rescued and she became a child of God. God watched over Joseph when his brothers sold him into slavery. God kept and watched over Joseph when he fled from temptation and was thrown into a prison, innocent. There he was in his quarantine, like many are in quarantine now. God rewarded Joseph and gave him a very high position in Egypt. And there his brothers came and sought forgiveness. And Joseph's father was given back to him. God saw everything, and he brought justice and reconciliation. God watched over Job when Satan attacked him and took all his family and his possessions and gave him an illness that almost killed him. God restored Job and rewarded him so much more that Job could say, He knows the way I take. 
and I will come forth as gold when he has tested me. Friends, some of us are going through a fiery test right now. Try and come forth as gold. Cling to him who knows your way. He's watching over you every day and every night. God tells us in Psalm 32 verse 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you, teach you with my eye upon you. His eye is upon you. And in Psalm 33 verse 18 we read, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on him, on those who fear him, and on those who hope for his loving kindness. God's precious, all-seeing eyes are watching us from the time of conceivement until death. In Psalm 139 verse 16, David wrote that his frame was not hidden from God when David was conceived, that God's eyes saw his unformed body. I'm going to read a few verses from Psalm 139 to strengthen your faith and to know that God is not only watching you, he's keeping you, he hems you in, he holds you. Psalm 139 from verse 2. Lord, you know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive and know my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Note, not some ways, all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Where can I flee from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heaven, you are there, Lord. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will hold me. Your hand will guide me and hold me fast. Many of us are settled here on the far side of the sea. Some of us are immigrants, some are refugees, some of us are still wondering what's going to happen in the future. Just know this, take this to heart, as Psalm 121 says, the Lord doesn't sleep, he keeps you, he watches over you, he is wide awake and he watches over all your comings and goings now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord, that we serve a living God who doesn't sleep. You know each one of us by name. You've called us by name and you've said, you are mine. If you walk through the waters, you will not drown. And if you go through the fire, you will not burn. Lord, enable us to say, as Hagar said in that desert, El Roy, you see me. You, the God who sees me and I trust in you. I trust in you, Lord. You've been so faithful. You've been so true. So, Lord, we give the future into your hands and we ask that you'd keep us in the hollow of your hands as you watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Paljon enemmän kuin ymmärrän. 